Hello everybody. Welcome to today's class. Last class we learnt about what is stress, what is strain. I would like to revise it a little. You know that stress is nothing but load by unit cross section area and the units are Newton per mm square. There are different type of stresses which you have already learned that are tensile stress, compressive stress, shear stress, thermal stress, etc. And strain. Strain is nothing but change in length by original length. And strain normally uh, classified into two. One is linear strain and another is lateral strain. The strain that is taking place along the axis of applied load is known as linear strain. The strain that is taking place perpendicular to the applied load is known as lateral strain. Coming back to today's class, today we will learn about elasticity, elastic limit, Hooke's law, elastic constant, stress strain diagram for ductile and brittle materials and factor of safety. Already we have learnt about different mechanical properties of a material like elasticity, plasticity, brittleness, etc. Now we will just come to know what is elasticity. The property of the material by virtue of which it returns to its original shape and size after removal of external road is known as elasticity. Now let us take a metallic scale fix at the one end and you apply a load P. It may be 200 grams, 300 grams. What happens? The scale will bend like this and when you remove the load P, what happens? The scale will return to its original shape. This property of the material is known as elasticity. Now coming to elastic limit. The maximum external load that can be up applied on a body without permanent deformation is known as elastic limit. Let us take a same example. Take a metallic uh, scale, fix at one end, apply a load P. Say initially you apply very less load of 100 grams. What happens? It bends. When you remove the load, it again come back to its original place. Gradually goes, you go on increasing from 100 to 150. Again it bends and again. And after removal of load, what happens? It comes to its original shape. There will be a point or a load where you apply a load at that point, the metallic steel rod will not re return to its original shape. That point is known as elastic limit. Once more, I'll repeat the maximum external load that can be applied on a body without permanent deformation is known as elasticity. Okay. Now let us come to Hooke's law. It states within elastic limit, stress is directly proportional to strain for a material. Stress is proportional to strain and this will be e equal to a constant E which is known as Young's modulus. 
and you, you follow your syllabus, you just you have to remember the formulas, you don't have derivation and proof. Now coming to Poisson's ratio. Within elastic limit, the ratio of lateral strain to linear strain is known as Poisson's ratio. You know what is lateral strain? Strain that is, if you take a rod, circular rod, and apply what kind of force, elongation force, or what happens due to this, the rod gets elongated. Here you see the length increases in the direction of, if this is the original length, you can see the length increases in the direction of applied load. In the direction of applied load. This is called linear strain. Similarly, at the same time, you can see that the radius decreases or diameter decreases in which is perpendicular to the applied load. This is called as lateral strain. Always for any material, Lateral strain by linear strain is known as Poisson's ratio. And we have three elastic constants that is Young's modulus, Young's constant or modulus of elasticity, bulk modulus K, modulus of rigidity or shear modulus C or which is uh, uh, represented by C of G. Young's constant or modulus of elasticity. This uh, uh, constant are always stressed by strain for uh, within elastic limit. Now coming back to Young's constant, the ratio of stress to strain within elastic limit is known as Young's modulus E is equal to stress by strain that is equal to F by E. We know F stress is equal to load by cross-sectional area. Strain is equal to change in length by original length. If we simplify, we get uh, E is equal to P into L divided by A into delta L Newton per mm square. Bulk modulus K, you know that modulus are nothing but stress by strain. Here, the stress is direct stress, the strain is volumetric strain. It is the ratio of direct stress to volumetric strain within elastic limit is known as bulk modulus. Direct stress by volumetric strain. Modulus of rigidity or shear modulus. Modulus means you have to remember, sorry, uh, modulus means stress, uh, sorry, Stress by strain. Okay. You have to change here. Strain. Hmm. Here it is stress by, uh, stress by strain. For uh, modulus of rigidity, it is shear stress by shear strain within elastic limit. That is F by phi. And it is denoted by Newton per mm square. These are the relations between elastic constants. The following are the three equations giving the relation between elastic constant. You know capital E is, e is Young's modulus and E is equal to 2, 2C into 1 plus mu where E is Young's modulus, C is rigidity modulus and, and K is bulk modulus. These are the three equations which we are used in your problems. For this, for your syllabus, there is no proof. Just we have to remember them.
stress strain diagram for ductile materials. Now, stress strain diagram for ductile materials. You know what is a ductile material. The material which uh, before undergoing failure, it shows plastic deformation or deformation takes place. That kind of material is known as uh, ductile material. This uh, stress strain diagram is obtained by taking a standard specimen and uh, placing it in an UTM, Universal Testing Machine, and gradually applying load. This load can be measured and even the change in length while applying load can be measured. UTM. Now taking this lo load and elongation, by plotting a graph stress on y-axis and str uh, strain on x-axis, you get a stress strain diagram for different loads as shown in the above curve. From point O to P is called proportionality limit. Here stress by strain is always a constant means for a stress is always equal to strain at any point at any point you can see there will be it will be same that constant you call it as Young's modulus and this differ for different material depending upon the material okay after that, uh, next is P to E, the point P to E, after applying load, after P, you reach a point P, this point is known as elastic limit. Up to this point, after removal of load, the specimen can regain its original shape and size. And after point E comes a plastic state. Plastic state means after removal of load, the material does not come back to its original state. From, you can see from the graph, from E to U, y, y U, that is upper yield point, for little stress, the strain increases more. And from U to Y, Y B, that is lower yield point without increasing in stress strain increases yield strength is defined as the maximum stress at which a, a marked increase in elongation occurs without increasing in load and after this point the material uh, will regain some strength and after increasing load, it will reach a maximum point U. This is known as ultimate strength. The ultimate tensile strength is the maximum stress that can be reached in tension test. And this is represented by U. After this, what happens? The specimen uh, uh, forms a neck. As the neck is formed, the ability to withstand load reduces and, and finally it breaks at a point P, B, uh, forming two parts. One is a cup and a cone. The point, this point is known as breaking point. The same thing I have written here, proportionality OP, uh, elastic limit, yield, yield point, uh, lower yield point and upper yield point. Next ultimate strength U and breaking point B. From the above experiment, we can get or calculate the following parameters. 
that is limit of proportionality limit of proportionality load by original cross section area yield stress stress is nothing but load by uh, load by area here we have to take yield load and original cross section area ultimate stress same thing load by cross section here ultimate stress means ultimate load by original cross section breaking stress breaking load by original cross section area we can even find out the percentage of reduction in area uh, original area minus final area by original area next is percentage of elongation final length minus original length by original length this you can have a better knowledge or better experience when you are conducting the experiment in your lab okay now let us come to stress strain diagram for brittle materials what is a brittle material the material that fails without any deformation is known as brittle material some of the example of brittle material are glass cast cast iron concrete etc the when you same when you conduct a uh, tensile test in an utm taking a standard specimen you the stress strain diagram is as shown where breaking point and ultimate point are the same now factor of safety it is defined as the ratio of yield stress or breaking stress or work, working stress factor of safety for ductile materials is equal to yield stress or working stress factor of safety for brittle material even is breaking stress by working stress we take yield stress because up to the yield point it obeys hooke's law or you can even take proportionality limit we take breaking stress for ductile uh, sorry brittle materials because uh, up to that point it obeys hooke's law or there won't be any elongation therefore we take breaking stress what is working stress it is the stress considered while designing the mission component is known as working stress okay uh, if you have any doubts you can send me a text or call me back thank you